a vicious murder of an Auburn University student. More Intentional killing. Premeditated. Say I'm sorry to the Bird family for Courtney taking. I truly believe it's an eye for an eye. You know, she's not breathing anymore. And there's no reason why he should be. The tragic story of Lauren Burke. She was a college student like any other, with parents, siblings, and loved ones back home. But as dusk fell in the college parking lot, she was in more danger than she had ever been in her entire life, and she had no idea. The evening breeze billowed in her ears as she walked to where she parked her car. Little did she know, she was being watched intently. As soon as she got to her car, she found herself frozen in shock, staring at the barrel of a gun between life and death. The only question on her mind was, was she going to live through this? The next few minutes were grueling and horrific, but even she didn't see the end coming. No one did. Born December 30th, 1989, Ashley Lauren Burke was known to be a beautiful person inside and out. Even though her parents got divorced when she was young, it did nothing to daunt her free spirit. She had a brother and sister she loved deeply, a family she was grateful for. Life was good. But even at a young age, Lauren had shown great interest in anything that had to do with creativity, art, and design. So it came as a shock to no one when after high school, she proceeded to Auburn University to study graphic design. But as always, her free spirit led her to do and to be part of other things even while being a student. She was a valued member of the lacrosse team, also a sorority house where she made friends who turned family while in school. Generally, Lauren was active in the campus community, contributing where she could and volunteering when necessary. She was described by her friends as well-liked and an excellent student who always had smiles and a kind word for everyone. Sadly, fate had something terrible in store for her, something that would shake the foundations of not just her heart, but the hearts of everyone in the entire town. Back when Lauren was in high school, she fell in love and dated a boy named Sean McQuaid. Everyone knew them as a close couple and wished them the best. But their love proved even stronger, as after high school, Sean and Lauren both enrolled in Auburn University. Even though their education was important to the both of them, they continued their relationship and made plans for the future together. But on March 4th, 2008, everything would change for the young couple. Everything would change forever. The attack. The day started out like any other day. Not a single thing was out of place. Nothing even hinted at what could happen later that evening. Lauren started her day by having breakfast at a cafe with Sean. They spoke to each other, laughed and hugged before they both parted ways by 11 a.m. when Lauren headed to class. Later that same day, she made a call to her dad and father and daughter talked for a few minutes about plans for spring break, which was coming up, and how she wanted to visit the dentist. Nothing out of the ordinary. After the conversation, she went to Sean's dorm to spend the rest of the day. At 8.30 p.m. that same evening, she had to go to the library to study with her classmate Michael, and she told this to her boyfriend upon reaching his dorm. The plan was simple. She'd have some lunch with him, rest for a bit, then head to the library later on. What could go wrong? It was already 8 p.m. when Lauren walked out of Sean's dorm. She was heading to her car, a 2001 Honda Civic. It was parked at the car park and she had 30 minutes to drive to the library for her study appointment with Michael. Sean and Lauren said their goodbyes, but little did Sean know that would be the last time he would ever see Lauren again. The chain of events that followed are mysterious and worrisome. At around 8.30 p.m., Lauren hadn't shown up to the library for her study appointment and her friend Michael was beginning to get worried. At first, he thought she was just running late, but Lauren was usually not this late. Something was wrong. So he did what any right-thinking person would do. He pulled out his phone and called her, but for some reason, she wasn't answering the phone. He called her again, and then several other times after that, 
but she still did not answer. Finally, Michael tried to call one last time, and this time, Lauren finally answered. But before he could even ask what was going on, she told him she had forgotten about their appointment and asked that they rescheduled. Again, just as Michael was about to respond, she hung up. Now Michael thought this was strange, but he shrugged it off. Maybe he was overreacting. Maybe she actually did forget about their study assignment. Now this is where the story takes quite a drastic turn. A little later, at around 9 p.m., the police received reports of someone laying by the road near Farmville Baptist Church. It was Lauren. Motorists had blocked the traffic on either side, waiting for the police and paramedics to show up. Lauren looked horrible. She had multiple wounds all over her body, and she seemed to be taking in long, deep breaths. She was suffocating and fighting to stay alive, but by the looks of things, she did not seem to be winning the fight. But even stranger, all Lauren had on was a pair of socks and nothing else. She was stark naked. At about 9.12 p.m., the first officers arrived on the scene. But by then, Lauren was already unconscious but alive. Barely. About 20 minutes later, paramedics arrived and Lauren was taken to the East Alabama Medical Center and the doctors and nurses on ground fought earnestly for the next few minutes trying to save her life. However, just nine minutes earlier, another strange thing happened. Around 9.27 p.m., multiple 911 calls were made from the same area and their stories were the same. There was a fire somewhere at Auburn University. Firefighters were called to the scene and they rushed in to find that the fire was in a car in the parking lot. Even though they succeeded in putting out the fire, no one knew for sure who the owner of the car was. It could have been anyone. A large crowd of students had gathered on the scene, yet no one could say who the car belonged to. Thankfully, no one was in the car at the time of the fire. So the officers on ground simply ran the license plates and discovered that the car belonged to one James Burke. So they called the owner and James confirmed that the owner of the car was in fact his daughter, Lauren Burke. James was beside himself with worry. He asked what had happened to his daughter. Had she been hurt? Was she in the car? Sadly, the police didn't have enough information for James. All they could tell him was that no one was in the fire-ravaged car, but they had no idea where his daughter was. As soon as the call ended, James was not at peace, so he began to call his daughter's phone. After several calls, Lauren didn't answer, and this did nothing to dull his anxiety. He was more worried than he had ever been in his entire life. This was strange very strange. James was getting desperate now. Next, he called his ex-wife and Laura's biological mother to know if she had any idea where Lauren might be. But again, she had no idea where her daughter was. At this point, James was at the brink of desperation, so he called his daughter's boyfriend, Sean. It was then that Sean learned for the first time that his girlfriend was missing and that her car had been ravaged by fire in the parking lot. Immediately, Sean began calling mutual friends, acquaintances, and anyone who could remotely have any knowledge of his girlfriend's whereabouts. It was then that he called Michael, who told him that Lauren had mentioned she'd forgotten about the study appointment and didn't show up at the library. Sean's eyes widened in shock because he knew for a fact that Lauren didn't forget about the appointment. She had told him she was going to the library. That was why she left his dorm in the first place. Meanwhile, back at East Alabama Medical Center, a few miles away, Lauren was fighting for her life. Multiple doctors stood over her, trying to save her life and ensure her wounds did not kill her. It was such a dilemma for them, 
No one knew who she was, and they had no idea what her name was or where she was from. Since she was found naked with no form of identification, she was also unconscious, so she couldn't communicate with them. Little did they know that the fire that had ravaged the car in the parking lot and the unconscious girl in the emergency room were connected somehow. But soon after, the incidents were connected. But sadly, Lauren couldn't make it. She died in the hospital as a result of her injuries. Most prominent was from a bullet that was seared into her body. Lauren's fire-ravaged car was investigated and a bullet was found. This suggested that the scene of the crime was in the car, and the perpetrator set the car on fire to destroy the evidence. Lauren's family was thrown into mourning. The entire campus was in a frenzy as to whether the campus was safe or not. The authorities swung into action. They assured everyone that they were doing all within their power to ensure they catch the criminal, and they even offered $10,000 reward for anyone who had any information that might lead to catching whoever was behind Lauren's death. But the very next day, something interesting occurred. 